The last thing that I felt like talking about today on my live is a writer that I deeply admire. I love her writing. I've learned so much from her. Her name is Anna Louise Strong. And the socialism that we need here in the United States more than anything is the socialism that you'll find in the writings of Anna Louise Strong. Anna Louise Strong is an amazing, amazing woman. I've got the biography of her up here, and I've got some of her writings. This is the biography of her, Right in Her Soul. This is a book she wrote, My Native Land. It's about the Great Depression in the United States. Anna Louise Strong. This, if, if every socialist in the United States could study the writings of Anna Louise Strong, we would be in such a better place. Anna Louise Strong was not Susan Sontag. She was not the synthetic left. I mean, Anna Louise Strong, if you read the writings of Anna Louise Strong, you read her book, The Stalin Era, you read her writings on China. I mean, this, this woman, this woman really expressed the beauty and the hope for American socialism. Her autobiography is called I Change Worlds. And you read her autobiography and you'll understand what Anna Louise Strong was about. Anna Louise Strong is from Ohio, like me. Uh, her father was a Protestant minister. Um, she attended Oberlin College in Ohio. And she, from the time that she was very small, was taught that she should constantly be interrogating herself about whether or not she was living a moral life, about whether or not she was doing the right thing, whether or not she was right in her soul. Right? And her family had been involved in the struggle to abolish slavery, you know, and that she was, she was a person who was motivated by a desire to do the right thing and to be moral. And she became aware of the fact that in the United States, children were working as child laborers. And as a Christian, and as somebody who was trained to believe in morality, she was opposed to child labor. She was. She thought child labor was wrong. And so she set up a photo exhibit just showing the horrendous conditions of child labor, of children working in factories. And she took it all over the country, a photo exhibit on the evils of child labor. And she was a very good speaker and orator. And she spoke to crowds of people all over the country, sometimes very wealthy people, about the evils of child labor. And she, her journalism exposing what it was like for these children that worked in sweatshops, these children that worked in, in factories, it just, you know, she was just so opposed to it because she wanted to be right in her soul. She wanted to be moral. She wanted to be like her ancestors who had opposed slavery. She knew that, that, that her upbringing pushed on her that she needed to be on the side of right. She needed to stand against injustice. Just an amazing woman. So in Seattle, she ended up in Seattle. And because she had been so outspoken in trying to better the conditions of children in the United States, she was elected to the school board in Seattle. And she was the only woman on a school board in 1914, 1913, 1916. Back then, that was pretty big to have a woman elected to the school board. Women couldn't vote back then, keep in mind. Women weren't allowed to vote back then, but yet, you know, she was on the school board of Seattle. And when World War I started, she was moving towards socialism and interested in socialism. She'd been involved with the industrial workers of the world, the IWW, the Wobblies that were fighting against child labor and exploitation by the employers. And she, from the school board, opposed World War I. So they drove her off the school board. After World War I ended in Seattle, they had the Seattle general strike. And all over Seattle, workers went out on strike. And she wrote articles for the union record, the pro-labor newspaper in Seattle supporting the general strike. Just beautiful articles. And she said that the, this, this, the struggle of the workers in Seattle was, was part of a struggle that would lead no one knows where. You just read these beautiful articles that she wrote. Just beautiful stuff. Anna Louise Strong. She's filled with that optimism. So if you read, you know, 
the Seattle General Strike happens, she ends up going to the Soviet Union. And in her book, I Change Worlds, her autobiography, where she was the editor of Moscow News, which was like an English language newspaper in the Soviet Union, she talks about how Americans are known for their motor mindedness. They're known as hardworking people struggling to get things done. And how during the Great Depression, as Americans were starving on the street, there was a cynicism that was sinking in in the United States. People no longer believed in the American dream. But in the Soviet Union, that was alive. What, what was going on with the five-year plans? They were working so hard to industrialize the country. It was really an expression of the American mindset. She talks about the Soviet Union being the new America and that the American mindset of working hard to build your country and, and believing in a better tomorrow, that optimism that she associated with America that had been draining away during the Great Depression, she found it in the Soviet Union, right? After World War II, she ends up in China. She's a personal friend of Mao Zedong, right? Personal friend of Mao and Zhou Enlai, a beautiful journalist, Anna Louise Strong, really expresses that kind of socialism. Socialism that's about building, not about tearing things down. Socialism that taps into that American, American entrepreneurialism, that desire to make tomorrow better than today. Socialism, socialism that, 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 that believes in justice and, and is always striving to do what's right and to be right in one's soul. That's so beautiful. Really, if you, I mean, and I'm sure there's things that are, that are wrong in her writing. I mean, there's, I'm sure there's things that I would disagree with. But Anna Louise Strong really gives voice to, to the mindset of a beautiful American socialism. Anna Louise Strong, great writer. I mean, check out Anna Louise Strong. She was, she's an amazing writer, an amazing journalist. Her writing shows shows really the spirit of the times. This was a woman living during the Great Depression. This was an American, Midwesterner, Protestant. And she was one to socialism because of what it was achieving. And she had a progressive mindset. And she had a, a mindset driven by morality and a desire to do what's right in the world. Just a beautiful, beautiful woman. Just an amazing woman. Her words are, are poetic. She has this way of, of writing that is just beautiful. I would check out Anna Louise Strong if I was you. That's the kind of socialism that we need more than anything. And she's been obscured. And, and they've, you know, they've really worked hard to just smear her and say she's a Stalin apologist. And, a, you know, I mean, they've done everything they can to really try to wipe her out of American history. A very influential journalist, a very influential writer. But they've really tried to kind of make her go away. But in Seattle, there's a lot of people who remember her. At Oberlin College, they have the Anna Louise Strong Room. That's all her writings and stuff. She was a very, very influential, important intellectual in U.S. history. And she was an optimist, you know, and she, she became an atheist communist, but her worldview was still very much influenced by that Protestant Christianity that she got as a child from her father, who was a minister. And, but she wasn't, she wasn't a right-winger. It was, it was the kind of Protestant Christianity that led John Brown to, to, to fight for the, the slaves. It was the kind of Protestant Christianity that led people to fight for women's rights. You know, if you go back 200 years or 100 years in U.S. history, it's very confusing, right? You go back to the Great Awakening um, when you had, you know, the, the birth of religious sects that are going out and fighting slavery and fighting against injustice and going out and trying to build utopian communities in Ohio and Pennsylvania and places like that. It, it's, it's, a different, it's a different time, right? It, and, and to be a religious fanatic during this time in U.S. history – you know, it was a very, very different, different way of being. Uh, it, it's, it's different. Now, she eventually became a communist atheist, but she, she held on to that, that optimism. And her socialism is rooted in that optimism and that, that desire to help children that are being worked on, on the factory floor, that, that getting on the school board and trying to advocate for low-income children in Seattle. Um, she's quite an amazing, amazing figure. And she's been forgotten. They've left her out of U.S. history. Check out Anna Louise Strong. I tell you, I have never been as moved as I was by the writings of Anna Louise Strong. 